Hey, how's it going, y'all? Well, as you can see, time for a review. What are we looking at here? Well, right now we are looking at, see a very shiny uh, steel ball there. You see me holding the filming device. <laughs> it's an iPhone. Um, yeah, what is this? You might say, well, some people might say, well, hey, I recognize that. That looks like one of those little self-defense keychain lanyard thingies. And you'd be mostly right, yes. Um, in common nomenclature, these are known as slung shots. Now, what is a slung shot, you may say? Isn't that like a slingshot? Well, no. A slung shot is different. A slingshot, obviously, is a little frame with, you know, rubber or elastic of some kind that launches a hard projectile. A slung shot is uh, kind of belonging to the family of weaponry, uh, commonly also including blackjacks and saps and sand clubs and things like that. A slung shot... Um, if any of you have read Robert Escobar's excellent book, Blackjacks, um, Saps, and Slungshots, you will know, and I'll tell you right now, these are common um, maritime tools, sailor's tools. Well, how does that work, you might say? Well, again, interesting question. Um, you know, a long time ago, and even up to modern times, a heavyweight, usually a metal ball of some kind, would be wrapped around in a special kind of knot, usually um, a monkey's fist knot. As you can see, this, um, for those of you who don't know, this is not a monkey fist knot, to my knowledge. This is some fancy paracord um, weaving here. And a monkey's fist knot would hold a heavy metal ball and would be used to throw between ships and other ships, or ships and uh, the dock or pier where there would be mooring. So, you know, usually called heaving knots and stuff. And, you know, 150 plus years ago and on up into almost the modern era, sailors would carry, you know, um, slung shots or monkey's fists on their person, usually a, you know, apple sized or, or even a, you know, a tangerine sized knot with a metal ball and a good length of lanyard, probably anywhere from nine to 18 inches long or even longer. Um, those things were dangerous. I mean, you're talking, you know, a pound plus or, you know, even more of metal moving, you know, 18 inches away from your clenched fist. The, the amount of impact that those things could generate is astounding. This one uh, came to me by way of J Love Paracord out in Bountiful, Utah, uh, Mr. Justin George. Uh, this is an inch and a quarter, I believe, steel ball bearing. I mean, very solid. And uh, I, again, I'm not, uh, I'm not real big into paracord braiding or handicrafts of any kind, but you guys can see, you guys can see the attention to detail on the, on the tan paracord here. And you can see he has a kind of a binding here that kind of keeps it more um, in line, keeps it more stable. And you can see here, and this is gutted paracord, by the way. Uh, for those of you who don't know, paracord usually has, uh, it's consisting of two parts, the kern and the mantle. And, um, you know, also in the, you know, by older people called kern mantle rope. Um, and it, yeah, lovely. So lengthwise, guys, I would say this is about stretched out all the way. That is about six and a half, seven inches. I did not grab my ruler before this review. I'm very busy lately, unfortunately. And uh, this inch and a half steel ball weighs around five ounces. So some people might say, well, it's five ounces. You know, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's decent, but what's that gonna do? Well, again, these are impact tools. And a lot of times you'll see similar devices on keychains and stuff, but this one and ones like it, this is probably, um, this is the second smoke smallest one that Justin George makes and uh, let me tell you you catch this on anywhere of your body moving at speed you're gonna feel it um, it's a flexible weapon now with that being said there are rigid aspects to it I mean that when you pinch that part that part stays rather solid but if you grip it out here the way it's commonly you know you'd commonly imagine using it it is loose so there's a couple things with that. One, you're gonna transmit pretty much all that kinetic energy to your target. Um, secondly, if you're just say practicing on this with a heavy bag and you smack it, there's a good um, chance and possibility that it's gonna bounce back and then into your hand, your your wrist, your you know whatnot. And and if it, if uh, any of you have experience with nunchucks or nunchaku or you know Japanese chain type weapons, Chinese chain weapons, or even just flexible stuff to hit other things, you'll know that does not feel good and it's not pleasant. So there's a lot of um, kind of training and practice you'd have to do, or you just have a longer lanyard. But this one is very pocket friendly, see? So this one, you can ball up in a pocket and it fits 
as compact or even way more compact than most saps and blackjacks. I mean, you got a little ball there and then, you know, some kind of flexible, soft paracord. So these run anywhere from, I believe, uh, 35 to 55 dollars depending on the size of the ball depending on the type of ball depending on you know what kind of paracords you have what kind of pattern you have etc etc and also he does different treatments with beeswax to make the paracord stiffer and last longer and stuff this is just a very basic kind of plain jane model um yeah and i told him i would i would uh, gladly throw this up for review for him so uh, you can find him on facebook he's um, a member of several um different impact weapon pages and whatnot. I imagine he's in some of the paracord groups as well. I mean, and this is tight, guys. I can't, I mean, I'm just gonna put some prep. It does not wanna bend in that direction, that direction, whatever. This, of course, is totally flexible and will loop quite nicely. And in fact, one of the techniques he shows is he loops, loops around his wrist, and now what you essentially have is kind of a form of a palm sap, meaning that you know, you just look like you have some paracord, but you know, in your hand you have a steel weight. And if you were to, you know, clock someone with that or just freely open hand smack something with that, um, all the solid parts that hits are going to be pulped. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to do a quick little shout out and review there. Um, yeah, I highly recommend these. I would like to get, or at least try, um, the inch and a half or even two inch versions They they get exponentially heavier, uh, the bigger in diameter they get. Uh, the inch and a half, I believe, is eight inches. The two in the two inch ball, which is pretty good size, that's a full pound. <laughs> so I mean, these are not these are not toys. You don't mess around with these. Um, you can just tap yourself on the on the top of the head with this, and you 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 feel it. So um, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope this review was helpful. Thank you so much, and take care.